This project was supported by Sashko's Big Stretch Caulk. Click the link in the description to enter Sashko's Go Big Stretch or Go Back Challenge. You could win free caulking and coupons from Sashko. This is one of those projects that I've wanted to do for a while. The prior homeowner had added to the original clamshell casing by adding one by four on the sides and the head of the casing. It just never really sat well with me. It was too much molding for the room and I just didn't like the design. So I finally got around to ripping the old molding out. That was the first step to rip out the window door casing and the baseboard molding and then go around the room with a little spackle and make any repairs to the wall and then prime the walls paint the walls and then make the molding for this project i used the williams and hussey molding planer and this is a custom molding that i designed about 10 years ago for a client and i'm using it on this project so i made the molding for the windows and doors and for the baseboard i'm using one by six that i cut down to four inches and then I'll use a nose and cove on top of it. So I'm going to go ahead and put a coat of primer on the baseboard molding and then everything should be dry and I can start installing the molding tomorrow. Okay well I've already set up my workstation, trimmed out two of the windows and one of the doors and before I trim out the remaining two doors and put down the baseboard I want to show you my work setup. So I've got a chop saw and you can see I've got a sacrificial fence attached to the chop saw. A sacrificial fence makes making your miters a lot easier. I'll put a link in the description to my video on how to make a sacrificial fence. Now I've also got a bunch of other tools out here on the work table. These are all tools that I end up using at one time or another during the project. So let's take a quick look at these and then we'll get to work. We'll start off with the nail gun. This is an 18 gauge nail gun and for the most part I'll use two inch nails and inch and a quarter nails. I always like to have a chisel with me on a project painter's tape, safety glasses, a nail set. If some of the nails don't set, well then you have your nail set and your hammer. This is a volt tester. Whenever I paint a room, I like to replace the outlets and the switches and the switch covers and outlet covers. So you'll need small screwdrivers, caulking. This is Big Stretch Caulk. This project is sponsored by Big Stretch Caulk and I've been using it now for a few months and I really do like it. You'll need a razor knife for a few things, but also just to cut the tip off the clock. And for fill, I use joint compound. So you need a spackle knife and a little sandpaper. When I trim out a door, I usually like to work from left to right. Some guys like to put both legs on and then do the head. I just like to work my way around the door. On the left side of the door here, you can see I have to deal with this wall. And because this molding has a back band, I'm gonna go ahead and attach the back band to the casing before I install it on the jam. First I'm going to cut the casing to length and you can see where the sacrificial fence really comes in handy because I can line my markup with the kerf in the sacrificial fence and I know when I cut this now I'll be right on the line. When I attach the back band, I'll align the molding so the miter continues. With this door, I don't have enough room for the full casing, and often with trim work, it's really just about coming up with the best compromise. So in this case, I'm going to trim the casing down to an inch and three quarters, removing the back of the casing. And then when I attach the molding at the head, 
I'll dead end that molding into the smaller piece of casing and the wall. Whenever I'm dealing with a problem area like this, I like to deal with the problem first. So in this case, I'm going to trim the door from right to left. Okay, this is my last piece of baseboard molding, and the baseboard went really pretty quick because there were no miters, everything's a butt joint. For the top of the baseboard, I'm using a small nose and cove. I'll finish attaching the baseboard, and then the next step is to fill all the nail holes with joint compound so I can sand, prime, and caulk tomorrow. Now I'm ready to caulk, and the first step in caulking is cutting the tip. You don't want to cut the tip too big. You can always make it bigger, but you can't make it smaller. And you're cutting the tip on a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna make the opening a little bit bigger. Two things you'll need to have handy when you're caulking is a cup of water and a rag. So to get started with caulking, you basically are using caulking to fill seams. And I'll start at the top of the casing here apply pressure and as soon as I see the caulking coming out then I'll start to move the gun down the seam. Then dip your finger in the cup of water and smooth out the bead. The last piece of molding to go down is the shoe molding and you can see how the shoe molding dead ends into the back band. Now this room is just about finished, there are a few little things I need to do and this is really the start of a much bigger project which is now making all the furniture for the room. I'm going to start by making a storage bed, a queen size storage bed. It will have drawers on either side. I'm also going to make two nightstands for the room and a small entrance table or sofa table and I'll probably also make the artwork for the room. So a lot of fun projects coming up. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you soon.